Thanks for your company. The Bank of Ghana has defended its decision to merge the five defunct banks into what is now known as Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited. The head of banking and supervision at the Central Bank, Osages, he told John News, but for the timely takeover by the bank, the situation with the affected financial institutions would have worsened and greatly impacted the economy negatively. His defense follows questions by the public bothering on the appropriateness of the process adopted by the Central Bank, leading to the withdrawal of the licenses of these five banks. He spoke, he spoke to George Riaffi in an exclusive interview. We have been engaging these banks for some time now. Uh, uh, those who uh, had capital challenges by way of solvency, those who had liquidity challenges. Uh, we asked them to submit recapitalization plans, uh, which were, uh, were also going to address the liquidity challenges that they had and they did and we kept monitoring the situation as far as implementation is concerned uh, but we realized that they were not able to implement the plans that they submitted and their financials kept deteriorating and uh, the regulator realized that uh, if the necessary prompt corrective actions under the law uh, were not taken, which uh, includes what we just did. It was going to expose the taxpayer to higher costs, uh, and it has uh, financial stability implications. Uh, it has uh, implications for the economy. So it, it is not true that they, they, on their part, did everything best to, to correct what you asked for, and that people thought that BOG was too harsh and wasn't willing to give time for these banks to recapitalize quickly and address all the problems that you raised. That, that, it, it's not true, because uh, these are banks that uh, continue to knock at the door of the central bank for liquidity support. Uh, these are banks that we realize they are solvency uh, positions. We're deteriorating on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a, on a monthly basis. So we had no choice. It's, it's, the longer we stayed, the, the, the more expensive it was going to be uh, for the taxpayer. And, and it had, like I said, financial stability implications. Mm. So that, that wasn't the case. Mm. They failed to implement the uh, recapitalization plans that they submitted to uh, the central bank. Mm. Uh, George, the question is, how was the bank licensed? How was the bank licensed? If you look at the, uh, the banks and uh, specialized deposit taking institution act, I think uh, section 16, it talks about licensing bank. If you acquire a banking license based on false information submitted to the bank, it has implications. It is clear. And that is the situation in which some of these banks found themselves. Mm -hmm. So we are not just talking about, we are not looking at the financial issues, the financial conditions of the bank, but we are looking at uh, the way the banks were set up. Mm -hmm. That is what we are talking about. Some will say it's, and, and sorry for the choice of words, because these are some of the concerns out there that it's an indictment on your office banking solution, an indictment on the Bank of Ghana, if I can trick you to give me a license. George, I think we have said it over and over that uh, we've had some challenges in time past. There have been uh, forbearance. There have been uh, some lapses in the in the supervisory processes. Uh, uh, but what I, we keep also saying is that these issues could have been swept under the carpet, but we decided to bring them up. Are you getting it? To tell all stakeholders that going forward. This is the way we're going to go. We're not going to compromise on uh, the kind of standards we've set for ourselves, and uh, people will be held responsible for what they do. The same level of urgent scrutiny that you're focusing on these banks, 
and you, you giving the assurance, so right? Are we going to see the same thing being turned even on your department as well? Because every day when I read these statements that the Bank of Ghana releases, and sorry to take you back, I, I see it as a serious indictment. Even statements like people, these managers and shareholders were pulling money out of the bank, depositors funds, to put somewhere. And I asked myself, where was the bank? This department. George, it's been very difficult and I think the regulator has come out to say that we had challenges in time past. We have admitted it is a human institution. And I'm not saying this to justify or to rationalize what went wrong in time past. But I'm telling you that going forward, we have learned from our lessons and going forward, we have done self-introspection. And there's very standards that we are using in assessing people who work in the other banks in terms of fit and proper. The same standards are going to be applied as far as those of us working in the banking supervision department is concerned. If you are in banking supervision, you know we have code of conduct, we have code of ethics. The bank has rules and regulations for employees and you must comply, especially those of us in banking supervision who interface with the banks and other financial institutions. The bank is now open for business, if I'm right, or help me out. Consolidated Bank. It's running. So it started business as we speak. Right? It has started business. So what is your expectation as a supervisor of the bank? Yeah, we have always said that we want to feel the presence of indigenous banks in this country. And for me, this step is in the right direction. Um, we're going to see a bank that um, has a very strong asset base, a bank that is well capitalized over and above the uh, minimum capital requirement that will come into force in December, mm -hmm. a bank that will have its uh, geographical presence in uh, a lot of places across the country, uh, a bank that uh, will be well resourced mm -hmm. to play its role as far as uh, intimidation is concerned. Well, the Bank of Ghana says it will soon publish names of directors of collapsed banks who are banned from taking part uh, in any role or having any role in the financial sector.